Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. Let's look at a sliding window problem, a hard sliding window problem, sliding window maximum. The statement is pretty straightforward actually. So we're given an array of numbers and we also are given a number K, which is gonna represent the size of our sliding window. It starts at the very left and then works its way to the right and so since it has and so since it's size k there's only going to be k numbers inside the window and for each position that the window is in we want to return the max value so you can see that this is our input array and our our window is going to be size three so this is our first window and the maximum value is three so then we see and then we add a three to our output array. So the output is going to be an array. Next, next, we see that this is the next position of the sliding window. And the maximum value in this case is still three. So we put a three in our output. And the next position we see that this is our window, the maximum value is five. So we put a five in the output. Now, you might recognize one solution to this problem immediately. For each of these windows, why don't we just scan through the array, right? Like it's pretty easy to find the maximum in an array, right? Like if we had one, two, three, we just check every value and see, okay, this is the maximum. And then we just shift our window by one into the next position, right? And we keep doing that until we're done. Well, the time complexity of this is gonna be roughly, since the size of our window is K, how many windows are we actually gonna have? Let's say the entire input is length N. In that case, we're gonna have roughly K times N minus K. That's how many windows we're gonna have, right? And so this is gonna be our time complexity. But I'm asking, is there a better solution? Can we actually make a linear time solution where n is the size of the input array? And the answer is yes. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I'm gonna show you the best solution, but one thing you have to notice first is this. So let's say this is our input array. We have four numbers and our window size is gonna be three, so k equals three. Notice how these values are in increasing order, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, so we notice that. Now look at our first window. We have one, two, three. We see that two is greater than one. We see three is greater than two. Now that's good. And so we scan through every element. One's not the max, two is not the max, three is the max. So then in our output, for the first value, we're gonna put a three. Okay, and that's great. Now we shift our window to the next position. So now I'm, I'm literally just gonna repeat that process, the brute force way. Now I'm gonna check two, okay. Now I'm gonna check three, three's greater. Now I'm gonna check four, four is the greatest. So we add four to our output. And so then we're done, we have our output, but we just did it the brute force way. But do you see the repeated work that we just did? As soon in our first window, we saw one, two, three. We know three is greater. So, so we basically eliminate two and three. And then when our window is at the next position, it's over here, right? One is no longer a part of our window, so we don't need to worry about one. What about two? Well, two is inside of our window, right? It's at the leftmost position. But since we know that this three is greater than the two anyway, why would we ever need to look at the two ever again? It's never going to be the maximum. And let me just make it even more obvious. Let's say our window size is six and this is our input array. Okay, so, our, so for our first window, we have to check Okay, the one, another one, another one, another one, another one, and then a four. So the four is our max. That's great. So we can save that. And then we shift our window to the next position and see we're repeating all that work over again. The one, one, one. As soon as we see this four, we know that these elements, as far as we're concerned, are useless to us. We never have to look at them again. They will never be the maximum inside of our window because our window is gonna continue being shift 
to the right position and the four is still going to be in the window even after these elements have been eliminated. And so the data structure we're gonna use to eliminate these values is a deck or a DQ. And I'm gonna show you the algorithm. And just to repeat myself, basically what I'm saying is if we have a window and we see a, a value that's greater than values that are previously in our window, then we can eliminate those values from our window. And what you're, so I'm gonna show you the algorithm and what you're gonna notice is that the values in our deck are always gonna be decreasing order. So this says decreasing. So we know our window, our sliding window is initially size six, right? K equals six. So we're gonna take the first one, put it in our window, the second one, put it in our window, and then just repeat that, right? We have five ones, we're gonna add all of them, and then we get a four. So since four is greater than the value at the top of our deck or at the rightmost position of our deck, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this value off. What we're gonna do is pop the top of the deck, right? And now we're gonna make the comparison again. We see there's still a one, so four is still greater than the top of our deck, so we're gonna pop. We're gonna pop this, we're gonna pop that, we're gonna pop all of them, and after that, we're gonna add the new value four. And so what are we gonna add to the output? So we have an output array. What value are we gonna add to it? Well, the leftmost value, and in this case, we only have one value, is going to be what we add to the output, so a four. And so we're done with this comparison. We don't have to look at it again, and we don't even have to consider these elements anymore. And now we shift our window by one position, so we're introducing a new element, five. So before we add the five to our deck, what do we have to do? We have to check, is five greater than the value at the top of our deck? It is because the top value is a four. So why would we ever consider the four as the maximum value ever again when we know there's a five right next to it? The answer is we don't have to, so we remove the four from our deck and then we can add the five to the top, and then we know that there's only one value in our deck, and it's also the leftmost position. We are gonna add that to our output, and now we're done. This is our output. But what's the time complexity of this algorithm? First, we took each one, added it to our deck, right? We, we did that for every single value. That was expensive, and then we also then we also crossed out, we had to remove every single value from our deck. But adding and removing, we know adding and removing is an O of one operation to our deck, and we had to do that for every single value in here potentially, but that's still O of N, right? The result is O of N. N, which is why this is a really good solution. And I'm gonna show you one last example. And by the way, this is called, the type of problem this is, is called a monotonically decreasing Q. And the reason is because our Q is always gonna be in decreasing order, which this next example is gonna demonstrate. And the reason we're using a Q rather than a stack is because we wanna be able to add and remove elements from the beginning in O of one time. But not only that, as our window shifts, like for example, our windows here, next our window could be here, we want to be able to take an element like this and remove it from the beginning. And we want to be able to do that in O of one time, which is why we need a Q. So let me quickly just run through this last example. So we have our first window over here, eight and seven. So we add eight to our Q. Then we look at seven. Well, seven 
is not greater than eight, right? That's just not true. So we're allowed to add the seven. We only want to remove smaller elements if they exist. But in this case, that's not true. So we add the seven. And notice how these values are in decreasing order. We have eight and then we have a seven, right? They're in decreasing order. So what that tells us is since we want the max value in our sliding window, we can just look at the leftmost value in our deck and then add that to the output. So I'm gonna add eight. For the first sliding window, the max value happens to be eight. Okay, now the next sliding window, we have seven and we have eight. Okay, the first thing to notice is that the eight is no longer in bounds. So we gotta pop from over here, right? And we wanna do that efficiently, which is why we're using a deck. But so before we add anything, we pop. Next, we see the six. Well, six is not greater than seven. That's not true. So we're allowed to put a six here to keep this in decreasing order. And now the max value in this window is seven, which is the leftmost value in our deck. So we add it to the output. And lastly, we look at the last sliding window, which is these last two elements. And we know that the seven is no longer in bounds, right? So from the leftmost position, which is this, we pop from our deck. We make one last comparison, right? We just added a nine. Let's take a look. Is nine greater than the top value of our stack? Is it greater than six? It is. What does that mean? That means we have to pop from the stack. We have to pop from the top of the stack, the rightmost position, or, or rather the queue. I don't know how many times I said stack, but we're going to pop from the rightmost position in our queue. And now we are allowed to take the nine and append it to our queue. So we add the nine now. We know that this is the leftmost position in our queue, and we know that in this window, nine is the maximum. So we did this correctly, right? So we can take the nine, add it to our output. So this is the result that we're looking for. And I hope this demonstrates a few of like, when you actually run through examples, it shows you like what you need to know. It shows you why we're using this data structure and it shows you why it's so efficient. So now with that in mind, the coding solution is not too bad. So we are gonna have an output array to put the values in. We're also, for our window, we're going to have some pointers, so left and right pointers. These are going to represent where our window currently is. They're both initially going to be set to zero. And we're also going to have a queue. In Python, we can do collections.dec. And so we're going to run this until our right pointer is no longer in bounds. So while right is still in bounds. So we want to, to our queue, we want to be able to append the value, this value, right, r, and instead of doing nums of r, I'm just going to do the index itself. So this is going to in contain indices because we know we can take an index like r and then easily find the number that it maps to by just taking nums of r, right? But before we're even allowed to append a value to our queue, we have to ch make sure that no smaller values exist in our queue. So while the queue is non-empty and the top value in our queue or the rightmost value in our queue is less than the value that we're inserting, nums of r, which is the current index we're at. So while smaller values exist in our queue, we just want to pop from the queue, just remove values while that condition holds. And only after we do that are we allowed to add the new value to the queue. We also, if our window, if the left value is out of bounds, then remove the left value from the window. So if our left index, left, is currently greater than the leftmost value in our queue, then we can pop from the left of the queue. So basically, we know left and right represent our window. So if our window is out of, if this value, the leftmost value in our queue is out of bounds of our window, we're going to remove that. We have to remove that. And this part is kind of an edge case. Uh, since we're, since we are starting at our window being 
uh, left and right both being at zero, we have to check that our uh, right plus our window is at least size K. So, so if we want to update the output, we have to make sure our window is at least size K. So that's basically what I'm doing here. And for each iteration of the loop, basically for each window, we want to append our output with the maximum. So we know the maximum is the leftmost position in our queue. And we want not the index, but we want the actual value itself. Don't forget, like me, to update your pointer. So we know right is always going to be incremented. So at the end of our loop, we can increment right. Left, though, is only going to be incremented once our window is at least size K. So we're going to put that inside of this condition. And now the only thing left for us to do is return that output. And it works. And we know that this is the most efficient solution with the time complexity being linear and the memory complexity also being linear because we are using a data structure, our queue. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.